I played a lot of games as a kid, good and bad. Some of my favorites as a youngin were obscure ass weird little products like Jaws Unleashed or Stubbs the Zombie, and recently I've been going back and trying to replay some of those games from my childhood to see how they've aged. One of the first games I started with, the game we'll be covering today, is Predator Concrete Jungle. All right, now here's where I gotta be real with you. Initially, I went into this experience wanting to make an appreciation post of sorts, a video all about giving props to a game that receives nothing but shit on release. Concrete Jungle was one of my favorites as a kid. It couldn't be that bad, right? <laughs> Wrong! Honestly, the more I started to play this game, the more I started to fucking hate it. This video was originally going to be called An Exploration of Predator Concrete Jungle, but now I'm going to call it Concrete Jungle. How did you fuck this up so badly? No, no, okay, that's not gonna fly. How about Concrete Jungle? How did this happen? Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Story. Let's get this thing out of the way early. Predator has never been a series about plot, besides maybe the first one, and even then, it's more about the characters and the situation rather than some sort of plot-beat-driven narrative thrust, and that's pretty much what they do here. The first third of the game is basically just the Predator running around and killing gangsters and muggers, like fighting crime with these objective names, what am I doing here? But before we get too far into it, let's just rewind and start right at the beginning. Barring some hilarious animation, Concrete Jungle begins with a semi-interesting inciting incident. You play as Scarface, a predator chilling on Earth, just doing his thing, decapitating 1930s gangsters, when shit goes wrong and he takes a bad plunge. Which is a moment that looks straight out of a fucking Bugs Bunny cartoon. I'm not even sure what causes this blast, honestly. It's almost like this fucker trips and falls, and then just calls it quits. It seems as if the predator's true weakness is random explosions. Hard to beat those, I guess. So being the conniving creature that he is, Scarface immediately thinks, well, I fell 15 feet, might as well nuke the city. And that's exactly what he does. Also, quick note, I always thought the Predator wrist bombs blew up the Predator, and not the ship that they pilot. More of a suicide bomb than anything. Not this dude's though, for some reason. Because plot, I feel like he probably just jerry-rigged his shit after the clan sent out the memo about the wrist explosion so he wouldn't have to bite the bullet and actually blow himself the fuck up. I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd stick the bomb in the ship. Fuck carrying that around on my hand. Which brings up the question to me, did he know that he would fuck up? Was this Predator aware of his own klutziness and just left the bomb in the ship. Don't worry about it guys, it'll be fine. Is the protagonist of Concrete Jungle the series' first cowardly predator? Or maybe he's not a coward. Maybe he's just a major asshole. His buddies certainly treat him like that when they show up, which they do fairly quickly. I'm sure they already had a Google alert set for Scarface ruinous disaster. Okay, now that I've expunged the toxic, pointless stream of consciousness thought process that the intro of this game has spawned within me, let's continue. It only gets fucking weirder from here, so you know. Scarface's posse arrives on site, and unsurprisingly, they are not pleased. This is the alien equivalent of your overconfident friend bragging about getting a hunting license, but then the first time he goes out, he trips over a fucking tree trunk and he carpet bombs the local wildlife preserve. This guy needs to go to jail. Scarface is taken out to the boonies of the universe and exiled to a backwater dust bowl with nothing to do for a hundred years but eat sand and fight not aliens. Why even bother giving them the dickheads if they're not gonna be xenomorphs? Why even design a new alien for this scene? I appreciate the little detail, I guess, but that's time that could have been spent elsewhere. That's time that could have been spent making the Predator handle like a fucking video game character. So Scarface assumedly spends 100 years doing push-ups and eating penis head scorpion stew before his crew finally shows back up to give him a shot at redemption. And so our story begins. Yes, I know, it's just starting. I'm taking my sweet time here. Like I said earlier though, past that initial explosion, not much happens in the first third of Concrete Jungle other than Scarface murdering a bunch of the local gangs, many of whom have pioneered the Predator's leftover tech in the century since the Scarface ruinous disaster. Now, at this point, I was still giving the story the benefit of the doubt, because I actually really like that intro plot point of an arrogant, gung-ho Predator causing a massive catastrophe. It shows off a different kind of Predator, a more emotionally fallible, almost relatable monster, but then and BAM, they hit you with the Neonopolis. If there's one way to immediately make me stop taking your story seriously, 
It's to name your main city Neonopolis. That is some axe cop level writing, guys. You should have left that one on the whiteboard. Eventually, Scarface cuts through the gangs and is left with none but El Matadores, a gang run by El Hongo, who desperately approaches the head of the Borgia Company for help, who is like the granddaughter of the mob boss you killed at the beginning or something. This woman, Lucretia, boss of El Hongo and heir to the Borgia family empire, responds to you fucking with her boys by sending out a team of mech suited Russians to hunt down our hero? They corner Scarface in a neon-lit NASCAR arena full of flying cars, which sounds awesome, but it's a it's a very loosely populated arena. Luckily, the Russian machine men fight with the coordination of an Overwatch team of randoms with no mics, so it's not really a thing. At this point, Lucretia's mad. She seems to have a vague hold on the entire drug market of Neonopolis, so she's starting to freak out with all the gangs and distributors dropping like flies around her. But she's got another boss battle lined up for Scarface, as she's employed a crew of Asian stereotypes to watch her back. Brady Lucretia. Your Ronin bodyguard is skilled in 10,000 ways to kill. That doesn't work either. God, what is it with this game and racial stereotypes as boss battles? Maybe you're like fighting the stereotypes. It's like you're fighting racism. It couldn't be that this game is just ignorant and childish, right? Well, just you wait. So Lucretia contacts her father for advice, patriarch of the Borgias of 2030, and we get this brilliant cinematic snap zoom. All animals have their habits, and in habit lies vulnerability. It's just like a Tarantino film. Now is as good a time as ever to mention the fact that the dialogue in this game is terrible for the most part. I'm sure you already inferred this. Here's some proof if you need it. In the name of God, once again, I beg you! You want me to send the Russians, is that it? I have people here who view murder, torture, and rape. Not as crimes, but as Olympic challenges. You hear that drivel, Victor, darling? Get your men down to New Way Field. Find out who's cutting into my action, and cut them out. Like a sick bowel, without anesthetic. Imagine deer picked up rifles and turned them on their hunters. We built Neonopolis and it stays in the hands of the Borgia family, understand? Get my wife whatever she needs and bring this monster to me. The projects and barrios are full of scum who'd murder their own families for a chance at your business. So moving on, Scarface tracks down El Hongo to the docks, where Lucretia has sent him to hide out with her crew of... <sighs> ex-porn star hookers. There's a black market trading depot there. You know the one. It's run by the working girls. Ex-porn star hookers, right? This could be turning into the greatest night of my life. I'll bet you already assumed that the story of Predator Concrete Jungle was flimsier than a paper bag, but did you also assume that it was sexist as a motherfucker? For real, this is easily one of the most overtly sexist games I have ever played, like top 10 easy. Oh, there's a good top 10 video idea. Eh, but that would probably just end up being a countdown of the top 10 Leisure Suit Larry games. Women constantly have their titties busting out for no good goddamn reason. They're talked about like they're meat. It's, uh, uh, it's just, oh, I feel like I've gotta take a fucking shower every time I play this game. So El Hongo's hanging with the porn stars and the Predator's chopping through them to get to him. But they're surprisingly resilient for a bunch of ladies wearing tube tops and cowboy boots. After slicing through an army of half-naked women, opening them up like pickle jars, you find out that this army of, quote, ex-porn star hookers are actually wearing these crazy future super suits that seem to be equipped with some modified version of the Predator's cloaking tech. But instead of just cloaking them, it also projects, like, holograms onto them that they use for the express purpose of looking extra skanky. These fuckers are guarding these docks in shape-shifting super suits and the writers thought it would be a good idea for them to be disguised as fucking cowgirls and butt sluts. Is walking around holding an assault rifle with your titties popping out really less conspicuous than a suit of armor? Why not disguise them as construction workers? Or fucking stevedores or something that's actually inconspicuous? Good holy fuck, who wrote this game? Okay, I gotta look up the credits. I gotta find the group of like four or five white guys that I can blame for this fucking ab Oh my god. Oh my god. Grant? Morrison wrote this game? Grant Morrison wrote this fucking game? Holy fucking Holy shit. fucking shit. Okay, I need to stop right now. Did anybody know this? This guy, this fucking guy, if you don't know, is a prolific comic book author that has written both some of the best and worst Batman and Superman comics ever produced. I'm sorry, this is just blowing my fucking brain out of my skull cap right now. I, I need to take a break. So, sexism, and Grant Morrison, that's what we're on. Does this shit 
really need to be in the game, Grant? I really don't think a Predator game needs to feature the player ripping half-naked women in half. This shit starts to feel like to catch a Predator more than anything. You kill El Hongo, you kill the porn star hooker leader soldier named... Baby Blue, you sick fuck. And now it's time to go after Lucretia herself. So at this point in the story, it's no longer about Scarface, as I'm sure you've noticed by the fact that I haven't mentioned the fucker in like five minutes. This is a story about Lucretia and the Borgia family, which, like, raise your hand if you wanted to see that shit. You get cutscene after laborious cutscene of these fucking awful assholes spouting shit dialogue back and forth like fucking exposition bots, and it just gets so... Tedious. I was hoping we'd get some more characterization out of the main character, but nah. Scarface never says anything, he never does anything more than spit mimicked voices out of his helmet, which I will admit is effective in one or two scenes. It's creepy. There's only room for one monster in this town. The ugly son of a bitch. I had just hoped that Scarface would get a bit more of an arc after the semi-interesting premise that the game started off with, but nah, all the cutscenes are delegated to a character who says shit like this. I have customers waiting in war zones all around the world, you moron! The game packs a bunch of twists into the last half, and I really don't have the time nor the energy to break down the arduous specifics of this game's finale, so I'll try to just sum it up in like one paragraph, keep it short. Lucretia's father is actually Hunter, the son of the gangster Scarface killed in the 19th 30s, who has been kept alive alongside his mother Isabella via reverse engineering and studying Scarface's blood and abandoned technology. Side note, Isabella is also wearing the same dress that she was wearing literally 100 years ago. I don't know why. She's also apparently the precursor to the mother computer system aboard the ships in Alien. Like what? She throws a bunch of xenomorphs at you at one point. What the fuck? She gets one good hammy line and then she gets stabbed. We only had that one night, but I never did get over you. <laughs> Hunter then turns himself into a man-predator hybrid, a mandator. He kills Lucretia with one solid backhand, and then you face off against him atop the biggest statue in the city, with Lucretia's old crew of Asian stereotypes backing you up. You always said you'd die to protect me. Well, now's your chance. Yeah, it's a fucking ridiculous climax. You kill Hunter, your crew picks you up, blah, 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 cut to credits. I'm done talking about the story, I don't want to do it anymore, let's move along to the gameplay. Gameplay. Concrete Jungle has all the makings of a great game. It's got a killer arsenal of weapons, it's got some brutal animations, it's got open levels that allow for exploration and a little bit of emergent gameplay here and there. So why exactly is it a fucking shit sandwich? The answer is complicated. Well, actually, no, not really. This game controls like shit. The biggest thing that holds Concrete Jungle back from greatness in the gameplay department are its horribly unresponsive controls. But that's not to say the camera isn't terrible, or the mechanics aren't shallow, or the AI isn't dumber than a sack of bricks. We got all sorts of issues to cover here. But before we dive into all the wonderful little details that make this game as spine-tingling as it is, let's talk about the good stuff. I like exploring this game's levels, when the game allows me to do so. Concrete Jungle is a linear game, but its levels come in multiple forms. You've got semi-open city levels, with multiple objectives and miscellaneous NPCs. Then you've got much smaller, more linear levels, with very specific paths to follow. And then you got boss battles, which usually take place in large one-room arenas. It's cool to play a linear game that mixes up the size, shape, and playability of its levels, but after I got a taste of the larger, more open arenas, that's all I wanted the game to be. The open world formula makes the levels feel so much more spontaneous and interactive, allowing the players to tackle situations however they see fit with their badass arsenal of alien weaponry. After levels like that, it makes the more linear sections feel obligatory and stilted, mostly due to the infuriating controls and colonoscopy camera that work best when the main character is given the widest berth possible. This game does not do well in interior spaces. I'm getting upset. We're talking about the good things. Smile through the pain, Charlie. Smile through the pain. The arsenal in Concrete Jungle is just about all you could ask for in a Predator game. You get to handle all of your favorite devices, from the plasma caster to the spear gun to the death disc, and they all handle appropriately. It is legitimately fun to blast a motherfucker's head off of his or her body with the spear gun. It just doesn't get old. Uh, God, okay, what else can I say here? When a string of jumps goes uninterrupted by a finicky camera movement or a bafflingly precisely placed piece of terrain, it can, it can feel good. It's possible for the platforming to feel good. Okay, I'm done. I need to talk about the controls. The Predator handles like a hussy. Oh, that's a typo. Why didn't I fix that? Concrete Jungle is a fucking crash course in just how badly awkward controls can fuck a game up. The character overreacts to the tiniest of movements or camera inputs, making fine movement a chore in a world that was specifically built for fine movement. The jumps in this game are fucking tight. 
You gotta know exactly where you want to land, and even then, getting the predator to land there requires such finagling that I often had to set the controller down to prevent my hands from cracking into gnarled witch claws. And in the midst of all of this, you're fighting a camera that seems to be under the employ of the gangsters you've been sent here to despine. You have to wrestle that thing into submission like it's a fucking wild stallion! The camera reacts just as intensely as the character, so you're stuck with eyes and legs that don't work. You're a blind paraplegic, but we're not done yet, folks. What element could we add to this cocktail to make it an even more pungent dumpster fire? Is it A, rage, B, hate, C, confusion, D, all of the above and more, but mostly C. I'll give you a second to make your choice. Why am I even doing this? The answer is C. Well, D, it doesn't matter. And that's because player feedback is a bit of a fucking issue in this game. Each mission's objectives are left intentionally vague, which is something I feel like older games used to do a lot more. There was a lot less hand-holding in general. I don't mind if a game lets me figure things out on my own, but the obtuseness of these objectives isn't so much not holding your hand as it is ditching you in the middle of the food court to be lured into a white van by Laffy Taffy and dinosaur comics. A game's objectives should helpfully push you towards what you need to do to finish the level, not send you into a 45 minute long spiral of madness, running around in circles feeling like the universe's dumbest alien. It never feels like this game fully explains any part of itself, leaving just a little bit of every single facet, from how to use the weapons to how to beat the levels, irritatingly indefinite. Now it's time to talk about the checkpoint system, or rather, the complete and total lack thereof. So the camel's back has already been broken by this point. Hours of this overly enthusiastic control scheme broke that poor animal in two, and this lack of any kind of a checkpoint system is like the vultures circling overhead, cementing for certain the slow, stomach-churning demise of Concrete Jungle. I can't tell you how many fucking times I got to the last objective of a mission after 20 minutes of desperately, but successfully, wrangling our Parkinson's riddled predator into submission, only to be met with a totally unforeseen explosion, or timer, or other arbitrary as fuck fail state, and then I just had to start it all over. Over. And over. And over. There is a sick, masochistic sense of satisfaction to completing a level after hours of slowly learning every fucking nook and cranny of the thing in order to be able to play it at all. But that limp reward of, yay, I spent two hours trying to beat this level of a 13 year old predator game that everybody fucking hates, just really isn't worth the blood or the sweat or the tears. The collectibles and extra suits are kinda cool, the arsenal is exciting in short bursts, and the core of the idea is solid. But all of this would be good is trapped in what can only be described as a fucking shit sandwich. <sighs> okay, now, in the midst of this whirlwind of fury, I, I must reiterate, this is not the worst game I've ever played, okay? There is some good in here. It could be worse. It could always be worse. I could have been in Brazil that time when spiders rained from the sky. Although after eight hours of playing Predator Concrete Jungle, I am genuinely no longer sure which of those two things I would prefer. In conclusion, Making this video has been fun, but playing the game that I needed to make this video was not fun. And here's the moment where I gotta be honest with you guys, I didn't finish this game. I do believe I experienced the breadth of <laughs> the content that Concrete Jungle has to offer, but after a certain point this video was just taking too damn long to make because I couldn't bring myself to play this fucking game anymore. I gave Concrete Jungle around 8 hours of my life. I got over halfway through, but I had to stop. I just had to stop. The checkpoint system was too much in the end. I saw that mission failed screen so many motherfucking times that I began to dream about it. This game got in my head like a fucking military interrogation, guys. It started to hurt me. Combine the controls that make you feel like a beached whale with a script that constantly assaults you with these cringy, terribly acted, and genuinely sexist as fuck moments, and you've got maybe one of the worst licensed games I've ever played. Maybe... Maybe just one of the worst. Opening this game up to keep slogging through it felt like pulling teeth after the second hour. I tried, guys! I tried! <laughs> Ha <laughs>